I'm Pat Halpin, and welcome to Meet the Leaders here in Albany. We've been joined by New York State Assemblyman Doug Smith, who represents an assembly district in Suffolk County. Assemblyman, it's great to have you It's here. great to be here. I'm a big so, fan. So you were elected in a special election to succeed Al Graff, who had served for a number of terms. So this is actually, as a member, your first state of the, the state of the state, the legislature coming together, and there are a lot of changes that have happened that happened last November with the Senate flipping to the Democrats and uh, actually the Republicans in the, in the Assembly picking up several seats. Give me, your, give me your thoughts about those changes, what it means for you, what it means for Suffolk County. Well, it's going to be a very different dynamic in a different year. Uh, there are going to be some additional challenges, but there's also some new opportunities. So I am I'm optimistic, you know, but uh, it's, it's the same thing. And I think uh, what was said today in the floor of the Assembly from both the Speaker and the Minority Leader were that we don't act as individual legislators, we act as a body. And I think that's something that people need to remember member is that we while we might have different ways to approach the problems we are facing the same problems uh, families uh, affordability uh, the opioid epidemic um, issues in education so uh, there might be a different approach and we will definitely have disagreements as any group of people that uh, of that number 150 people representing different interests around the state uh, will have but uh, I think it'll be a different dynamic but I do see some opportunities as far as uh, to uh, you know change uh, take uh, the teacher evaluations away from the high stakes standard tests that's something that I've been advocating for why was that such a mistake and I know your predecessor was out front on that and and of course the state ed people because I followed this issue said don't worry we're just rolling this out it'll take a little bit of time and and things will be okay it never got okay <laughs> the rollout was a disaster and as far as the whole situation where we're basically pairing and I'm, I'm an educator I'm a certified mathematics teacher I've taught in the classroom previously at Sachem schools um, which I represent now in the assembly uh, but to the idea that you're going to mandate students pass an exam and then base the teachers job on whether or not they can do well on this exam when you're not you're not actually showing the teachers or students what they're going to be learning in, in the curriculum so now we have tests and as a teacher I'll tell you uh, when I would give an exam that's really to see to show me how well I am preparing the right. student it is a, it is but, a reflection of teaching and learning right to show you know did I get the material to them that week right. but these state tests that are unlike an exam that you might give at the, on a Friday you know quiz or something like that uh, we don't see the results of them so we don't see the questions how well the students did. so there's really no information coming from it that's productive and it's actually taking time out of the classroom where you want to be teaching the students not necessarily and we do have some of the best schools as you know in Suffolk County uh, around the state and even the, in the country but uh, I think our people have made a significant investment in education and they expect to have that time being spent so teaching. So you expect that the state legislature will pass a law? I think they will. Uh, to de-link that? I think that they will and I think that's the right move to, to decouple the high stakes testing from the teacher evaluations. In our section, my district, 70% of the students are not taking the tests. Yeah, you know, I, I frankly, uh, I don't know what your thoughts were as an educator. I never discouraged my kids from taking the test. Take the test because I would tell them, look, it is, is as much a reflection, as I mentioned before, on the quality of the teaching as well as what you've learned. But uh, they, so we got to get past that. Right. So that that's and, that's and, an issue. And, and that that's important because it's a huge distraction and something that's important uh, that we need to move on. What are your thoughts about some of these other big issues that are coming up? So, for example, you know, this is going to be year. It looks like New York State legalizes recreational marijuana. Now you're an educator, so you see the world through a prism of as an educator, somebody who works with students and all that. Uh, and I would presume that that would inform you as to what's really going on out there. Yeah, I think right now in the classrooms we're having an issue with the vaping, the Juul products that are happening. But I'm also worried as a father uh, that the way, and, and we held numerous hearings across the state on the issue of adult recreational use of marijuana, and the issue came up about packaging. So I'm concerned not necessarily about the safe sale of marijuana, but when that product does get to the consumer, they have marijuana cookies and gummy bears. It may say eat a quarter of the cookie or eat two gummy bears, but if that thing's on a coffee table or in reach of a child and they get a hold of that, um, some of the testimony was that poison control was getting additional calls of children ingesting these things. So I think we really have to be careful when it comes to the edibles, things that are marketable to children. As an educator, that's kind of where I'm coming from that. That's something I'm going to be advocating for. And I'll be honest, we were successful with taking that away from the medical marijuana that the edibles would not be included. So that's something we'll be talking about. Well, it's obviously part of the record recreational uh, marketing of, of this product. Uh, now some people say look 
Uh, if we're going to be doing that, we should uh, we should go into the records of people who are in prison, others who are, who were in prison because of cannabis related. Uh, crimes. What are you? What are your thoughts about that? Expunge those records. Give people an opportunity to I, get on with their lives. I think that that is actually an important debate that we need to have. And if you talk to members of law enforcement, they have so many things going on that they don't necessarily want to be spending time on these low-level possession uh, things. And as far as the criminal justice system, we're spending a lot of money to incarcerate. And if you look at it, there is an aspect where certain segments of the population are disproportionately getting arrested I and saw, getting... I saw one report that said when it came to uh, cannabis arrest, marijuana arrest, about 81% were uh, communities that are predominantly black and brown. So if you look at it, that's a significant criminal that's, justice that's issue. And I can see that. Yeah. So the question is going to be, and as, as the legislator of the folks at home watching, uh, that's something we have to balance, is we need to make sure that there's going to be pros and cons for every issue. Like I said, I'm very concerned about the access that children may have, that, uh, that this would be in the communities. Uh, AAA testified that at the moment there's no way to really tell when somebody's driving over the limit. Uh, that's something that's going to have to be hashed out. But as you mentioned, there is a good chance that this may become a reality as near as June, you know, as soon as, or as, you know. Um, but the criminal justice element, it's, it's a concern. It's a so, real concern. So I, I presume you say, look, if this is going to happen, let's make sure we get it right. I think it's something, and I think the people that sent me here to represent them, when I, you know, something that I like to promise to people is that I'm going to be your advocate. And that means getting the best situation we can. And if something, you know, that, that's, that's my job, is to make sure if there's some good, we want to get rid of the bad as much as we can. As much as we can. Uh, Assemblyman, we're running out of time, but real quickly, if you were to say, what's my number one priority, what would it be? Right now, my concern, there's $1.2 million, a billion dollars, $1.2 billion stuck in Albany that was part of the Smart Schools Bond Act that was approved by voters I'll and the legislature. That money, where that money is supposed to go. So that uh, was part of a bond that was supposed to go to uh, security upgrades and tech upgrades in our schools. It was approved by voters in 2014. During, unfortunately, the entire second term of the governor, the money has stayed in Albany. So I have a petition out uh, encouraging people at secureschoolsnow.com. And each signature sends a message to the governor. We're asking for that money to be released. The schools I represent, I have six districts. They need to make critical security upgrades, vestibules, cameras, basic things. They've been waiting now for four school years to get that money released. It's already been approved. We just need that. And I'm sure they have the plans and they're ready to go, but they're already job, ready. they don't have the money. They don't have the money and they don't have the approval from the state. So yeah. we're asking the governor if he can work with his budget office to see what we can do. So All thank right. you, Pat. Assemblyman, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, that's going to do it for Meet the Leaders from Albany. I'm Pat Halpin. We'll see you next time.